What's going on everyone? Thanks for checking out this Fallout 76 video. So in this one, I'm going to be making a comprehensive video over why it is worth it to max the Raiders reputation, in my opinion. Of course, if you don't like the things that I cover in this, then it's not going to be worth it to max the Raiders reputation for you, in your opinion. I'll be covering basically everything you can get for maxing out this faction's rep. The overall goal of this video is to help save players some time on making a decision on whether or not it's worth it to invest the time to increase this faction's reputation. And not to mention, it could help you make more of a decision on which faction you want to go with when doing the Vault 79 heist within the main story. But I believe a lot of you probably already made that decision. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into these goodies you get for maxing out the Raider's reputation. Starting off with the floater grenades. This is a new type of grenade that you can get. Now, you don't have to technically get max reputation for this faction to unlock these, however. I believe once you are at least friendly with the Raiders, they will be sold from Mortimer, which this guy is located in the Crater's core. You know, where Meg is located at. He'll be located right here. This guy will be selling all of the goodies. At first, he's only going to be selling the Dynamite and Dynamite Bundle. But over time, when you continue to increase the Raiders faction reputation, He'll be selling more, as you can see here with my buddy's clip. Look at all of this that you can get from him. We got the Armco Ammunition Construction Appliance, which you do need to have max uh, reputation to get that. Chemist's Backpack Mod, Dynamite Dynamite Bundle, like I mentioned before. The Special Floater Grenades, which I'll be getting into those here soon. And the Gauss Minigun, along with the Gauss Minigun modifications. Unfortunately, my buddies were not able to get the modifications for the Gauss Minigun. However, they were able to just get the Minigun itself. So yeah, I'll be showing you some clips over it just destroying enemies. You guys are definitely going to like this if you're a heavy build. Oh, definitely. But yeah, let's go ahead and start this off with the floater grenades. Each of the floater grenades are going to cost 150 gold bullion. So 450 in total if you're wanting every single different one. And to craft them, first off, the perk cards that it's going to require is Demolition Rank 3 and Science Rank 1. As for the materials it's going to need, I guess it just depends on which one you're crafting. The floater flamer grenade is going to require two adhesive, two aluminum, one floater flamer sack, two fuel, one oil, and two springs. For the floater freezer grenade, it's going to require two adhesive, two aluminum, one cryo cell, one floater freezer sack, one oil, and two springs. As for the floater nasher grenade, that's going to require two acid, two adhesive, two aluminum, one floater nasher sack, one oil, and two springs. So as you saw, for each grenade, it's going to require each of the different sacks. Just depends on, once again, which one you're crafting. So let's go ahead and craft these. Now I will mention I did manage to get these myself. You only once again have to be at least, I believe, friendly with the Raiders faction. It could be neighborly, but I'm pretty sure it's friendly. But either way, it doesn't require max reputation rank to get these sold for Mortimer. However, it does take gold bullion to invest into these. So that's the reason why I'm covering it in this comprehensive video. Just so you guys can see on if you want to waste your gold bullion on these or not. Anyways, the damage for each of these grenades are pretty powerful. As you can see, for the Floater Flamer Grenade, it makes the target burn for 4 seconds, and it has 305 base damage with 50 energy damage. For the Floater Freezer Grenade, it makes the target freeze, causing reduced movement speed for 8 seconds, which is not that bad, especially if you're going up against the Scorch Beast Queen or some kind of tougher fight. Slowing down enemies is definitely beneficial. And as you can see, the base damage for this is 244, so not as powerful as the Floater Flamer. Anyways, next up here is the Floater Nasher Grenade, which this is basically a poisonous bomb. As you can see, it makes it so the target is poisoned for 8 seconds, and has 195 base damage with 40 additional damage. So yeah, that's the overall statistics of them. Now let's go ahead and see them in action. So starting off here, we're going to toss a Floater Freezer Grenade. So as you saw, it did slow down a few of the enemies. You could see the frost around them. And not to mention, it did take out a few with one detonation. Also, a nice little addition for each of the floater grenades is that it comes with the floater sound effect when it explodes. I think that's, I think that's a pretty sweet little ad. But anyways, now let's go ahead and check out the floater flamer grenade. As for the floater flamer grenade, this one hits a bit harder, and as you guys can clearly see, it doesn't make as big of an explosion as, you know, just your typical regular grenade. Anyways, next up here is the Floater Nasher Grenade. Once again, not 
all that devastating, to be completely honest with you all. Honestly, the most beneficial grenade out of all of these, in my opinion, would be the Floater Freezer Grenade. Just because it could help with harder fights, such as the Scorch Beast Queen, the Imposter Sheep Squatch, or whatever you're going up against that's extremely tough to you, it could slow down their movement speed to make them a bit easier. I actually know personally a few people that just whip out a cryolator within the Scorch Beast Queen fight just to slow her down and then they switch back to their main weapon. So yeah, overall, do I recommend you all to spend gold bullion on these? No. Besides maybe the floater freezer grenade once again because that can be beneficial against harder fights. I mean, yeah, they're cool and all, but I don't know. I feel like they're a little underwhelming, especially their explosions. They're not really that devastating to me. Okay, so next up here, you do have to have Max Raider's reputation to get this, and it is an extremely beneficial camp item. Probably one of the best things that you can get within the game. And that is the Armco Ammunition Construction Appliance. This is an ammo generating machine. However, it's going to cost you 750 gold bullion. So it's definitely not cheap. But personally, this is one of the things that makes it truly worth it to get this faction's reputation maxed out. As you can see here, under resources, you can craft one of these. It'll cost you one circuitry, one copper, one gear, and three steel. And the best part about this is it doesn't require electricity whatsoever. It's insane. But unfortunately, you can only have one of these in your camp, which makes perfect sense because this is an ammo-making machine. Check this out. When you go up to it on the terminal, you can have a choice between different ammo types that you want to make. Which, by the way, my buddy is currently crafting 45 rounds, so that's the reason why you don't see that within this list. That is another thing that you can craft, as you can see at the top, currently producing 45 ammunition. But anyways, the selection we got here is a pretty wide variety. We got 10 millimeter rounds that we can craft, 38 rounds, 308 rounds, 44 rounds, 556 rounds, it's amazing, 5 millimeter rounds, shotgun shells, fusion cells, gamma cells, plasma cartridges, and 50 rounds. How awesome is that? You could place your personal ammo crafting machine at your camp. However, I will mention that it seems like it takes a little over a minute to craft the ammo. So it's a little bit slower than you going to take over the ammo factory. However, the benefit over having this is obviously you don't have to contest for it. As you know, when you go over to take over the ammo factory workshop, you will have to watch out for other players that may come there and want it too. And that's when you're going to have to initiate PvP with them. Unless you decide not to show up and just let them take over it. Also not to mention, waves of enemies will randomly come to the ammunition factory and you're going to have to defend them off as well. So just having that comfort over an ammo generating machine at your camp is hands down awesome. And if you think about it, you can just go ahead and take over the ammunition factory as well as just having this in your camp. So you're double producing ammunition. All depends on what you really want to do. Okay, so next up here, let's go ahead and purchase the Gauss minigun, which you are going to have to have max reputation to find this from Mortimer. As you can see, it is going to cost 750 gold bullion as well. So it's not cheap. It's one of the most expensive items that you can purchase. But this thing is a beast. I definitely recommend this if you are a heavy build. So first things first, you can craft legendary variants of the Gauss minigun. As long as you have a legendary module, which you can purchase these, from the purveyor. As you can see though, when you go up to a weapons workbench and go under the category energy guns, you can go to the Gauss minigun, and once again, as long as you have that legendary module, you can craft a legendary variant of this minigun. It's going to require 11 aluminum, four circuitry, two legendary modules, 11 screws, two silver, four springs, and lastly, 21 steel. As you can see, my buddy got a junkies gauss minigun it's not that great of a roll though however he did get bashing damage with the junkies effect but anyways it doesn't really matter this thing still melts enemies he has five addictions and this is the damage that he was dealing out and speaking of another one of my buddies actually got this gauss minigun and he sent me a clip of him taking out the legendary wendigo colossus a couple times with it and once again this is another junkies uh, variant too. I'm gonna go ahead and just play out the gameplay footage of it to just let it speak for itself over how powerful this thing is.
yeah, as you saw, it can be ridiculously powerful. Anyways, lastly up here, I'm going to be showing you all the compound bow that you can purchase from this Raider vendor up here. When you get max Raider reputation, you will notice that this vendor will sell the compound bow plan, along with a bunch of other modifications for it as well as plenty of other modifications for other bows too. And as you can see, it can cost up to 2,300 caps. Anyways, when you learn the plan, if you go to a weapons workbench and go down to the machine gun category, you'll notice that you'll be able to craft it. The requirements for it are, for one, you're gonna have to have gunsmith rank two perk card, and it's gonna cost nine adhesive, 13 aluminum, 13 gears, 20 plastic, 17 rubber, 15 screws, and 18 steel. So yeah, it's not super cheap to make. Anyways, a quick comparison here I guess I could do for y'all is comparing it with the regular bow. As you can see, my base damage for the regular bow is at 138 damage, and my compound bow is at 153 damage. Keep in mind I have no perk cards to up the damage with the bows. So yeah, that's the reason why they are so low. But that is the overall damage difference between them. But yeah, here's a little bit of gameplay with the compound bow. Once again, I don't really have a build for this at the moment, but uh, yeah, surprisingly, there's not a huge difference between the regular bow and compound bow, besides just a little bit of damage difference. Kind of surprised me, honestly, because it definitely can take a while to get your hands on this. But either way, if you are a bow build, it's something you want to get because it'll make your build as best as it can get. But yeah, I guess that's our wrapping up this video, everybody. Hope you found this comprehensive video enjoyable over getting max raider reputation. And hopefully this helps you save a little bit of time on choosing whether or not you want to invest time into getting max raider reputation. I pretty much went over everything that you get for maxing out this. But yeah, I guess before I completely wrap this up, I just want to leave a friendly reminder here at the end if you could maybe take a little bit of your time and leave a like on the video that's greatly appreciated and hey if you're new around here consider giving my channel a chance and sticking around subscribing for tons more Fallout 76 content my channel is literally dedicated to covering this game as always though all of that is totally up to you just leaving a friendly reminder here at the end I'm out of here everybody thanks for taking the time watching and listening and remember to try to stay safe out there until next time peace